So we all know that the stats for the attachments for the Cold War guns don't actually match up, but I would never have thought it would be this bad. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Bruiser Grip or Underbarrel to see if it actually has any hidden stats. If you enjoy videos like this, weapon stat breakdowns, weapon comparisons and overall tips for Warzone and Cold War Season 1, subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers. So I was actually doing some testing for a different video and stumbled across this and then I also searched YouTube for this and seen one other person make a video on it. Initially I wasn't 100% convinced, they only tested two guns and I pretty much went through quite a lot of the assault rifles from Cold War and on top of that I've taken a look at some of the SMGs as well. But what we're talking about here is the Bruiser Underbarrel if it actually affects recoil for your guns. So what is actually stated as in game is that it helps with melee quickness which no one really cares about that much and it also has no cons. And because of this, no one would actually choose this attachment, and rightly so, we don't need melee quickness, especially when you can get an attachment like the Field Agent Grip that will help with vertical and horizontal recoil control. But what if I told you for some guns, this attachment actually helps better with vertical recoil control than the Field Agent Foregrip? On the screen here, you'll see an example for the Cold War AK-47. The base weapon is on the left, the Bruiser Underbarrel is on the right, Overall, this recoil chart was done at a 15 meter distance just to get a good idea of how this would perform at those kind of medium ranges. And this is one of the examples where this underbarrel works really well. For the AK-47, you can see it reduces the vertical recoil quite significantly actually, and it also reduces a bit of that horizontal recoil. The bullets seem much more compact compared to its base recoil pattern. This attachment is very inconsistent however, it does work really well on some guns like the AK-47 and the Krig, but then on other guns it doesn't really work very well or it doesn't work at all for some other guns. A gun that I was actually really excited to test this out on was the Cold War MP5 because it has such high vertical recoil. I was hoping this attachment could significantly reduce the vertical recoil of the Cold War MP5. This is a gun that I find really hard to control and I think a lot of other people will too. And other attachments I've tried out, like the Field Agent Grip, don't seem to be helping all that much either. But this is another attachment that's not really going to help this gun. Personally, I was a bit disappointed that it didn't actually work on the Cold War MP5. But then there are some other guns where it seems like it does help a little bit, but not as significant as it does with the Krig or the AK-47, for example. Don't get me wrong, it is quite difficult to spot and it's on a case by case basis because it depends on which gun you're using, it's going to help out certain guns more than others. And that's just how we've had to test these attachments overall for the Cold War guns on a case by case basis because what is stated in game for most of the attachments is completely incorrect. Another couple of guns we tested here was the XM4 which is on the left and the MAC-10 which is on the right. And we can see that the Bruiser does change the XM4's recoil pattern a little bit. It's not significant though, it's not really something that you should probably concern yourself with too much. It seems like it's actually increasing a lot of the horizontal recoil as well at the same time, so it's probably not something I would choose for the XM4. And then for the MAC-10, it doesn't really seem like it's doing much at all, once again similar to the MP5, so maybe it doesn't really work that well on SMGs, I'm not really too sure, but it's kind of too soon to tell because I need to test some of the other SMGs in the game. But on the MAC-10, it seems like it's doing nothing at all. And one of the last guns I wanted to test was the FFAR-1. This is going to be a really popular gun once the DMR and the MAC-10 get a further nerf. And on the FFAR-1, you can definitely see that it does reduce the vertical recoil. Now, it's not a massive amount, but it's definitely significant that you can notice it. Like I said, all of these tests were done at a 15 meter distance and what we might do now in the future is actually test each gun individually with all the attachments just to see what attachments specifically work well with that gun as it's definitely not clear at all straight from the game. Hopefully Treyarch or Raven fix what it says in game each attachment does because going through them one by one is very tedious to try and test it to figure out the exact specifications of that attachment. But I just wanted to share this for some of you who didn't actually know about it and it just means that you should be testing each of your guns individually inside Plunder or something for example and making sure you're getting those attachments correct because what they state in game is not actually what they do whatsoever. So that's all for this video. If you enjoyed it and you learned something new, leave us a like as it helps us get recommended more. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe as we're trying to reach our goal of 10,000 subscribers and we want to reach that goal very soon. Thank you very much for watching.